Anybody that lives here, we live on Metau time. Metau time just kind of makes you slow down, relax, you know, take advantage of what you have in your life and uh, enjoy it. When it's not fire season, the skies are blue, the scenery is better, we have a lot better air to breathe. Right now, we're experiencing lots of smoke from the Cedar Creek Fire, which is to the northwest, and the Cub Creek II Fire, which is to the northeast. Because of the fires, the recreation areas are mostly closed. And of course, we don't really like to go out and recreate when it's a AQI of, like this morning, it was 260. It's a summer of smoke in America. A historic drought persists, wildfires rage in the west, unprecedented heat waves crisp the landscape, and thick smoke blankets parts of the country, pushing air quality into dangerous levels. In the Meadow Valley, in the foothills of Washington's North Cascades, the air quality index has been so bad this summer that for some days it ranked worst in the country and possibly the world. In order to live in a community like this, you have to really just be able to take whatever happens in stride and have a plan in place to be able to survive through it. You look at towns in California like Greenville that burned to the ground. And the reality is that something like that could happen here. But we're very, very thankful that it hasn't. Never before have we experienced two weeks plus of smoke in the air, nor have we had fires that completely surround us. The fire season has been extending longer. We're having more wildfire, and those wildfires produce more smoke. That's a reality that can be quantified. I had to evacuate a few weeks ago, and it was very scary for a while because the fire department, it just seemed like they'd lost control, and it just, it just went nuts over up the pass, which never happens. I get scared for this place because I don't want to lose it. I think about whether it's a safe idea to take my kids down to the lake for the afternoon. And if I'm going to be outside for any period of time, I'm going to put on an N95 mask. If I'm outside uh, enough, I get a splitting headache, sore throats. It takes all of us down. There's no part of the body that wildfire smoke does not touch. When the land burns, you know, trees and brush and whatever, it creates this tiny molecule that comes into your lungs and then gets into your bloodstream. People usually notice it first on their nose, their throat, their mouth, their lungs. For people who are sensitive, like people with asthma or COPD, emphysema, or other respiratory diseases like allergies, you'll notice it right away. Um, and then depending on how high the level is, people will start having impacts from the inflammatory levels. So eventually kids will start going to the emergency room for asthma attacks, people will have heart attacks, strokes, and then over a lifetime, it restricts the development of lungs. We have patients who suffer from anxiety. They have hypervigilance at night. They can't sleep for fear that the wildfires are gonna to come towards them, that they um, will have to evacuate their houses, or just the anxiety of not knowing what's to come. Like, how long will the smoke be here? Is it gonna get worse? Is it gonna be like this next year? As with all sort of environmental and societal disruption, it always falls hardest on those with the least resources. So people who are more likely to have poor health are also less likely to have the resources to deal with it and to be able to move to a healthier climate. It's really important to recognize that some people have the choice to leave and other people don't. I think people have got to own what's happening. Our temperatures are rising. With the hotter temperatures and the drier conditions, wildfires are going to be a fact. And we're going to have to take different measures than what we're doing now. There's so much relief when the wildfire smoke clears and you can see blue skies again. And I think it's in our nature that we just want to forget about it and move on, but it will be back. Preparedness for wildfire smoke um, is something that we absolutely need to incorporate into a seasonal kind of routine. You know, I want this place to be here for my children and for me in the future, and I feel like if this keeps happening, then maybe it won't be. 
Pretty soon, medicine is gonna be able to print 3D hearts and we can replace kidneys and we can do all sorts of amazing things and we can dump trillions of dollars into healthcare every year. But if we can't provide clean air, clean water, access to healthy foods and safe, intact, supportive communities, then we're gonna lose the game. People are gonna be more sick. I think one misconception is that, like, if you don't live in the West, you're safe from it. It's like, this is a global issue. People all across the nation and the world are affected by climate change. They're affected by wildfire smoke. Greece is burning, Turkey is burning, Siberia is burning. No area or part of the world is gonna escape the health impacts of climate change. And right now we're seeing wildfire, but it's just sort of scarily a sign of things to come. This is just kind of some of the ways that we're living with wildfire and wildfire smoke this summer in the valley, or every year really. Every time I walk into my house, I walk past, this is my go bag. It's not um, exactly a bag, but this is the accumulation of sort of the most sentimental memorabilia that I would hate to lose in a fire. This is my dog's fur. This is something my grandfather made me. That chest is mostly full of pictures. One of the things about living with wildfire smoke is it can often be very loud. We are running typically four air purifiers all the time in this house. These have become really popular as a kind of inexpensive, do-it-yourself way to clean indoor air. I'm a toxicologist. I lead a local project called Cleaner Metal. We work to improve air quality where possible and protect health where necessary. So what that looks like is really on protecting health, putting together programs to get good interventions to people, like making N95 masks widely available. We distribute those throughout the valley. We've worked with our health clinics to make sure that you know anyone that's complaining about symptoms from smoke can try to get an intervention like a box fan air purifier into their home. We have to create programs and better awareness around how to make sure that we have equitable access to clean indoor air during periods of wildfire smoke. It's just absolutely critical. I don't think about leaving. And I had dinner with a few friends just a couple nights ago in the thick of this smoke and somehow the conversation came up and literally everyone almost unanimously at the same time absolutely said, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving. This is a beautiful community with a lot of resilience and a lot of dedication to trying to figure out hardships that get thrown our way, whether that's wildfire or smoke or drought for people trying to grow food, whatever it is. They have a commitment to it. And they have a commitment to their lives here, to their family, to other people in the community.